How did I make my train elevator? I'm glad you asked that question. My starting point and inspiration was the Piccadilly Model Railway's YouTube channel. I highly recommend you check it out. There is a link in the video description below. John Warner's three video series documents in detail how he made his N-scale model railroad train elevator. I decided to follow his design with adjustments for my own situation. Look in the video description below to find a link to the first video in the series. I'm new to model railroading. When my wife and I moved to our new apartment, the spare bedroom was allocated to my first ever model railroad, N-scale of course. It's a small room, but a great empire. I had to design the layout before moving in. I had wooden cleats installed on the walls for mounting framework for the two layout levels. Two levels of my model railroad would wrap around three walls of the train room. The closet would become my workshop. The track plan is a so-called folded dog bone design with a space 124 inches by 84 inches. Maximum reach is 24 inches. The upper scenic level is 19.1 inches above the lower parade level. There wasn't enough room for a helix, so this entire plan depended on my being able to build a Piccadilly style train elevator to transfer trains between levels. The elevator is positioned against the back wall at the highest elevation on each level. This video explains how I constructed the elevator. I will describe all the parts in detail and how they fit together. Go to the video description below to download my detailed parts list. I leave it to you to decide how to acquire the parts. Of all the parts, the most critical is the actuator because it does the heavy lifting. Following John Warner's suggestion, I turned to eBay to find my actuator. Link in the video description below subject to expiration. There were dozens of offerings of linear actuators made in China, some claiming U.S. distributors. Here's the actuator as it comes in the box. with hardware. Runs on 12 volts DC. And in order to reverse it, we just reverse the wires. I chose a model actuator to fit my room. It has a stroke length of 500 millimeters, runs at 30 millimeters per second, and lifts a maximum of 56 pounds, which is more than enough for my application. I made sure the lower level of my railroad was higher than the actuator's retracted length of 605 millimeters. The actuator has built-in limit switches that automatically stop the actuator at the lower and higher levels. If you want to stop it in between levels, you have to turn off the power supply. The manufacturer offers an optional wireless remote control, which I did not need. The actuator's manufacturer provides a cutaway drawing. The force from a small direct current motor is multiplied by a set of gears connected to a screw drive that raises and lowers the arm, hence the term linear actuator. Limit switches are built into the housing to prevent the screw drive from going too far in either direction. 
the web page declares that the limit switches are fixed and cannot be adjusted. It might be possible to take apart the actuator in order to move the limit switches, but I did not try. I did not need to. I designed my train elevator so that the actuator pushes up exactly vertically under the elevator deck. I thought this would minimize stress on the components. I was able to do this because I am building the railroad to fit the actuator. However, if your railroad already exists and you want to add a train elevator, it would be possible to mount the actuator at an angle to accommodate its length to the railroad. This is what John Warner did on his N-Scale Piccadilly model railway. John reports his tilted actuator works just fine with no problems. The actuator comes with mounting brackets for the top and bottom. I wanted a smaller bracket to connect to my deck so I fabricated my own. The base for my actuator is a wooden block made of one solid piece of painted pine board. The board is stuck to the floor with removable white glue. The thickness of the base was determined by the elevations of my railroad's two track levels. I had to tweak this a little to get it exactly right. The lower bracket is bolted to its base with two one quarter twenty by one inch long machine screws flat washers, lock washers, and nuts. A question arises whether the actuator is too loud. To be honest, the question did not even occur to me until it was raised in viewer comments to my previous posting. I like the sound of the actuator. To me, it befits the massive enterprise of lifting an entire model train to the stratosphere, a main event for Bethany Branch Line, to be sure. It would be strange to me if the actuator were silent. The actuator here sounds no louder than the one in my power lift recliner. The main difference is the environment. This actuator is bolted fast to the wall and floor and reverberates in an empty echoey room. Certainly the actuator's whining would be dampened as the railroad is built out and the room fills up with sound absorbing stuff. If not, and I want to make the actuator quieter, I can try muffling it with a foam wrap. Regardless, I'm happy with the sound. The next most critical components of the train elevator to talk about are the rails and bearings, which enable the elevator deck to glide up and down smoothly without sideways motion. I bought them on eBay, a set of four rails and eight bearing blocks. There are many offers on eBay for these products, all seeming to originate from China and having similar specifications. I picked the one that seemed to offer what I wanted for the best price. Link in the video description below, subject to expiration. Each rail comprises a polished carbon steel rod, three quarters of an inch in diameter, and a mounting plate. To eliminate all possibility of binding, I position the rails at exact right angles to the top edge of the plywood frame. After getting the rails square, I attach them securely to the plywood frame with 32 one quarter 20 by one and a quarter inch long machine screws, flat washers, lock washers, and nuts. Now the rails were absolutely parallel. The frame is 23 30 seconds inch thick AC grade plywood painted with satin finish latex wall paint to seal the wood from the environment. The next crucial step was to install the frame with rails attached with the top edge of the frame absolutely level. Precise leveling would assure that the elevator's mechanism would not bind. The frame is attached to the wooden wall cleats with 36 number 8 by 1.5 inch long pocket screws. The pocket screw heads have their own built-in washers to prevent gouging the wood. When I double checked, I discovered to my dismay that the frame edge was not level. So I had to back out all but one of the 36 pocket screws and reset the frame on the wall. Now the frame was absolutely level and I could proceed with the build. The elevator deck supports the railroad track. I chose to make the deck out of two pieces of the same plywood sheet that comprises the frame. I flipped the two strips of plywood end to end to try to cancel out any bowing and glued them fast with carpenter's wood glue. The deck is suspended by the bearings gliding on the rails. There are eight bearing blocks, two for each rail. 
The blocks are solid aluminum and have embedded plastic strips with rows of stainless steel ball bearings. The bearing blocks have threaded screw holes for mounting the deck. I fastened the deck to the blocks with 16 M6 by 50 millimeter hex cap screws, block washers, and flat washers. Even though the bearing blocks fit tightly on the rails, the extremely long, narrow deck twisted laterally when pushed by the actuator. This created unacceptable wobble. To eliminate the wobble, I decided to copy John Warner's design for his Piccadilly train elevator by stacking the bearing blocks on each rail to eliminate the deck's lateral twisting. The elevator became vertically rigid and the wobble was gone. I bonded the pairs of bearing blocks with heavy-duty two-part epoxy. The extra bearings are screwed to poplar wood braces. They're glued to the bottom of the elevator deck with heavy-duty construction adhesive and painted to seal the wood from moisture. The wood braces are attached to the bearings with 16 M6 by 30 millimeter hex cap screws, lock washers, and flat washers. I also decided to emulate the Piccadilly design by adding stops to the bottoms of the rails. The bearing stops are made of four steel L brackets. I positioned the brackets by holding them against the bottoms of the bearings. These stops provide a measure of safety and load relief for the actuator. I was able to save money by using a surplus DC power supply for this project. It produces 12 volts of direct current at maximum 5 amps, more than enough power for the actuator. Model railroaders conceivably could power their actuators from their 12 volt DC power buses under their layouts, but motor noise from the actuator might get into the power bus. Therefore, a separate power supply for the actuator probably is the safer strategy. Electrical leads from the actuator and the power supply are brought together in an 8-foot long 4-conductor rubber electrical cord. The 18 AWG wires are rated to handle the electrical current needs of the actuator. The wire connections are soldered and heat shrink wrapped for reliability and safety. Here is the elevator control module I made from an old Apple AirPods heavy-duty cardboard carton. It houses two toggle switches, one to switch power to the actuator and the other to reverse current polarity. This control module is temporary. I will replace it with a more permanent control module when the electronics shelf for the model railroad is built. The toggle switches are double pull, double throw, locking with no center off. Piccadilly's train elevator uses only one toggle switch with a center off position, but I prefer having separate toggles for the on off and up down switching functions. The switch wiring is simple enough. The up down toggle switch has crisscross wiring to reverse the polarity of the direct current electrical signal, thereby reversing the actuator. Now you know everything I know about how to make an N scale train elevator. May good fortune smile on your own train elevator project. Of course, a true test of my train elevator will be when I can get trains to run reliably on it. The next Bethany Branch Line video will show my Arduino-based system for controlling the train elevator's electronics. Stay tuned to Bethany Branch Line. Thanks for watching!